All right, guys, I'm testing out these O2 deletes from Ashton Araby. He also sent me the roll angle sensor delete. We'll do that later on. Uh, but the main thing we're interested in is this little guy. So this is supposed to delete the O2 sensor in such a way that it raises the engine idle to help you idle underwater. Um, it's just interesting way he's doing it. It's like coated with some stuff. I've never seen anyone do it like that before. Like it's kind of like dip looking. Um, yeah. So the way we're going to test this is obviously with science. This is a tiny tack. You wrap it around your plug wire and it tells you RPMs. This is, uh, in case you're wondering, this is your O2 sensor wire. It's easy to find because it goes to the O2 sensor. Yeah, it snaps right here next to the air box. So I'm going to unplug the O2 sensor and plug in the delete and see if we get a different RPM. So what we're doing now is we're doing an operating temperature test. The bike's been idling for 20 minutes. It's at normal operating temperature. Um, we're going to plug in this and see if it changes RPM. In order to measure it, we're using a tiny tack. You can see right now it's idling at 1400 to 14, 1390 to 1410. The spec is 1400. That's what we expect. This thing installs by just wrapping around the spark plug wire. Very simple, tiny tack. They've been around forever. Great way to, um, I don't know how that happened. Um, great way to measure your RPM to make sure your bike's tuned properly. I have a similar one I installed on the 450L because a $12,000 dirt bike doesn't come with a tachometer. So that one's got this other little tack. Um, but whatever. In order to do the most science possible, I'm going to try to find my laser thermometer and make sure the cylinder head temperature remains the same between the two tests. All right, so again, stock O2 sensor plugged in, 1400 RPMs, 1410, 1400. It's, about, it's 1400. There you go. 247. That's a consistent spot. We'll do it the same spot. That's all that matters. We're consistent. 246, 247. Okay. I'm going to shut it off for a second. I'm going to quickly plug in the O2 delete. Uh, quickly is important because I want the engine to be at the same temperature when I test, both it, test it both ways. Okie dokie, so there's the O2 delete plugged in and snapped in place. Um, that's the factory one dangling. Let's see what the engine temperature is. 241, 242, pretty close. And we're idling at 1400 RPMs. So once the engine's hot, that's not doing anything. All right, so it's been idling for quite a while now. And you can see we're still at 1400, 1390, 1400. Same exact RPM with an O2 delete as with a factory O2 sense. So driving around normally, this is not gonna do anything to increase your RPM. I don't really understand how it's gonna affect it when we put it in the water. Um, I've already done some cold testing and I didn't see an improvement, but we're gonna give it a shot. So this is O2 delete. We're gonna back into the water at 1400 RPMs. We're at 1440. Oh, my butt's wet. So it is idling, but you know, just to show you, I'm trying to be careful because I'm using a cell phone for once. It's not that deep, it's barely under. Go a little bit deeper. 1360, 1390. All right, now it's definitely underwater. It's barely idling. 1360. You see it's starting to die out. You can see it happening right there on the tag. It's really close to stalling. So I'm gonna keep it here for a minute, completely submerged. The back of the rack is just barely underwater. We'll see what it levels out at. 1400. Yeah, you're probably excited that it's idling underwater right now, but my bike will usually idle underwater at this depth, right? It's when you get deeper, there's a problem. So the air box is three inches under, the exhaust is probably six inches under. Just to be consistent, see that back, that back bar is just barely touching the water, that's how we're gonna do it when we come back. 1430, 1440, that's pretty good. Let's we'll see what it gets up to. We're gonna see if this O2 delete makes a difference underwater. We're repeating the exact same pond test with the factory O2 sensor plugged in. So we're at the exact same depth we were last time, the back bar is kissing the water. Um, idling at 1470, let's see, 1470, 1480. So pretty close to the exact same RPMs it was idling at with the uh, O2 delete. Very interesting. We're gonna leave it here for a minute um, and see how long it'll idle like this. Um, 14, 
1470, 1460. So it is interesting that the RPMs are slightly higher than when it's idling on dry ground. Um, I thought they were dropping down when it went in water and idling. Maybe that's not exactly what's going on. It's hard to tell because the engine sounds different once the exhaust goes under. But um, it looks like because the engine's colder, maybe the air intake temperature sensor, the little sensor in the air box, maybe because it's got colder air going through it, um, which the air is coming through the same pipe, but you know the air box itself is colder. Um, maybe that's bumping up that idle. So maybe guys, we're doing this all wrong. Maybe we should not be trying to modify the O2 sensor. Maybe we should be trying to put resistors in place of the air intake temperature sensor. Use that to bump the idle up. Um, that's an interesting idea because that's what my 450L used. Everyone's like, oh my God, how does it idle underwater? Well, the thing is, the bike is not on a water wheelie right now. It's flat, pretty much, and this isn't that deep. So these bikes do idle underwater to a point. When I usually have them stall out, it's when I'm going forward to reverse, and when you shift gears, it grabs the next gear, puts an extra load on the engine, and oof, it dies. Uh, one way to definitely keep your bike to idle underwater is to put a stall in it and then uh, hold the throttle a little bit or crank up the nut. But stalls just ruin the bike in every other way. So now it's at 1450. Um, but I think this, the ticket to, should be to do something they do with the, it's called the power plug or the booster plug for the 450L where it plugs into the, um, the air intake temperature sensor and modifies that resistance in order to make the engine think it needs more fuel or more air and then you know make it jerk crank the idle up i wish these things had an adjustable idle screw like the uh, 450 um again this is a second version of the o2 delete that i'm testing i'm getting the same results which is that they don't do anything um just like the copper 90. i know a lot of you guys swear by it but i'm using science a little rpm gauge collecting data and you can't argue with data that's not an opinion right pretty consistently showing that I'm getting the same RPM in the same situation. The claim is that it has gives you a higher RPM to help you out underwater. We're not seeing that. Maybe there's another way it helps, but I don't know. This is the claim, right? Your air intake temperature sensor, it measures temperature inside the air box. If there's cold air in the air box, there's more oxygen, therefore more fuel. If there's hot air in the air box, different story. This helps with tuning. Um, most fuel injected vehicles, Honda makes has them. That dirt bike has it. Um, so something they made for the 450 before the Vortec computer came out was called a power plug and this is a power plug It's a module that plugs an inline or booster plug um, Plugs an inline with your air intake temperature sensor uses this other temperature sensor to manipulate the resistance given to the computer which is then a way to trick the computer into thinking that The air is colder to give it more fuel the problem with that bike from the factory is the EPA made it run really lean so This was like an early attempt at trying to fix it Obviously it helped a little bit, but not enough uh, for me. So I put a Vortec ECU on it, so I'm not using this anymore. So I figured I would try it on the Rubicon. The connectors are about the same. Um, I had to trim off the edge of these tangs right here on my air intake temperature sensor and on the side of this connector. You can see where I trimmed them off. It was a razor blade, real easy. And then I was able to plug it in. Um, and I did a little test, I'll show you. Not real conclusive, but um, I think what would be interesting is we start replacing this with some resistors the same way you guys do with the um, O2 sensor and maybe you can get that to bump the idle up probably not the idle but you can use it to bump the mixture up and if you run fatter um, we find with 300s and stuff like that that if you put more fuel it runs better underwater because underwater you got a really dense cold air charge your air box is real cold the pipes are cold cools the air down before it gets into the engine in general especially at idle um, so there's something to try it didn't really work great but yeah that's my next theory is so you can see the module there it's plugged in down there to the air intake temperature sensor just plugs in a line with it right um, now normal operating it's not affecting my um, idle okay but there's a decent chance it could affect the mixture because that's what it did on the 450 the problem with the 450 is the 450 is a high performance machine it needed a vortex computer to run the way I wanted it to run but maybe the 450L booster plug on this simplified you know turd will do something for me we're gonna find out now my theory is once the booster plug, which I the thermal couple on, I put back there, goes underwater, it's gonna get really cold. Like really cold. Because it's not made to go underwater, right? It's made for a dirt bike. So I think if it gets cold enough, it might really fatten up the mixture, which could help it run underwater. Now I don't even know if the uh, the two sensors are the same between this and a 450L, but they're both Hondas and it's both a two-wire sensor that's just temperature. 
So there's a decent chance, in my mind anyways. Um, so let's see what it's idling at. Ooh, 1270, that's not good. It'll work its way up though, this is what they always do. This is why you gotta ease your Honda into the water. When you first hit the water, it's gonna idle down, and then it'll start idling back up, as you can see. So it looks like the RPMs are the same with the booster plug. But what if somehow it's helping it idle mixture-wise, right? Because it, I, RPMs are one thing, but you know, it could affect the mixture, which you kind of think would also affect the RPM a little bit. Um, so let's go back a little deeper and see when it stalls out. It's deeper than we were before. Oh, that's deeper than I wanted to go. That's pretty damn deep. RPMs are staying consistent at 1400, 1410, 1420. So it's worth noting, I don't want to get my little tiny tack underwater because I don't think they're waterproof. So I'm just going to jam it up here or something. Yeah, so we're real deep now. You can see we've lost some RPMs, but they're creeping back up there. Huh. Hard to say if it's helping or not. I'm really, really not sure. All right, well, that's about as deep as I want to go right now. So, uh, inconclusive, but there's something to try, guys. Maybe